This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Director Chinyonye Chuko has accused Hollywood of unabashed misogyny towards black women after her film Till missed out on an Oscar nomination. The film star Danielle Deadweiler had been widely tipped to be nominated in the Best Actress category for her portrayal of Mummy Till Mobley. The Academy has been under fire about its lack of nominations for actors of color for decades, and this has even been questioned by the award show's MCs and presenters such as Eddie Murphy, Kim Bessinger, and Kevin Hart. This week on the program, we look at the historic lack of inclusivity at the Academy Awards and also question why African films are not represented at the Oscars. I'm Beatrice Marshall. Welcome to Talk Africa. Controversy at the Oscars is nothing new. When Hattie McDaniel became the first black actor to win an Oscar in 1939, she was put on a segregated table at the back of the awards show and refused entry to the whites-only after party. Fast forward to 2015. In response to all the 20 acting nomination slots for the Academy Awards going to white actors, activist April Rain tweeted, hashtag OscarSoWhite. In 2016, the cause attracted worldwide attention when, for the second year in a row, all 20 acting nominations were again given to white actors. Now, Halle Berry remains the only black actress to have won the Best Actress Award way back in 2002 for her role in Monsters Ball. In an emotional acceptance speech, she acknowledged her peers as well as the black women who had been nominated before her. But 15 years later, after her epic moment, Berry lamented, quote, that moment really meant nothing. I thought it meant something, but I think it meant nothing, end quote. The controversy carries on to 2023. As this year's Academy Awards approach, there are once again no black women nominated in the Best Actress category. Well, joining me now to take a closer look at the history of racial problems at the Academy Awards are from Lagos, Mildred Oko, Nigerian film director and producer. From Philadelphia, Katia Woods, a freelance film and TV critic and entertainment journalist. And from London, Karen Krizanovic, a researcher for feature films and secretary of the UK Critics Circle Film Section. Welcome everyone to the program. Let me start off with you, Karen, because film director Chinyoye Chuku, whose critically acclaimed film Till missed out on an Oscar nomination in 2023, she said, we live in a world and work in industries that are so aggressively committed to upholding whiteness and perpetuating an unabashed misogyny towards black women. How do you respond to that? Well, uh, she was responding passionately to the omission of Till, which I was extremely upset about as well, because it's a it's a superb film. Danielle Dead Deadweiler's performance is incredible in that. Whoopi Goldberg acted in it, also produced it. It had a lot of clout behind it. It just didn't get the momentum that it needed. And I'm disappointed that it wasn't nominated either. So that's a passionate response from a passionate filmmaker. And I think that it's, it's not all about race and it's not all about sexism, but it's certainly mixed in there. Mildred, your thoughts, is it about race? Well, I, I obviously I agree with Chinoya. Um, there's two kinds of people, you know, in our industry. People who think we should be quiet about some of these things that are actually very overt. And then people who think we should make noise about it. And obviously, um, Chinoya is one of them. And I am one of them. What she's saying is right. And if we don't talk about it, it will continue for years as we have seen over the years, it's it's continued. We've, I don't know how many uh, black women we, uh, have been nominated, but it's obviously very few. So I quite agree with you know, uh, and I think um, that uh, these are things that we must discuss in the open and let people be aware of it, so that whenever people are voting, they have it in mind 
that this is happening, whether it's intentional or not. So, Mildred, let me just get your thoughts here. When you talk about we should be talking about it, what exactly should we be talking about? Exactly what Chinonia said. We should be talking about why people would overlook things that black women do, that black people do. Why would you, as a Caucasian person, see a bunch of films and you look, you watch them and you don't take the ones that black people are in seriously? You don't think that you should vote for them or you should nominate them. This is not the first time this has happened. There was the uh, the color purple uh, right. many many years ago, of so many nominations and not one win, and so uh, the, the, the industry must begin to look at itself and understand itself. Why do we do these things? And it's not just in film; it's in every facet of life. Karen, you said this is not about race. What is it about? I didn't say it was complete. I didn't say it wasn't about race. I said it was not completely about race. Um, we, we had Oscars So White, we saw an inclusion of, of a lot of black actors and filmmakers, not, not just performers, but behind the camera as well. We have costume designers, and the stories are becoming more diverse. But the Academy is full of old white people, and particularly white men. They don't die off as quickly as you might think. So these are the people that are voting, and that's one of the reasons why there's been an intake of new voters for the in for Ampas. We've almost I think it's ten thousand people now. And there's a lot of young people, people of color, uh bigger, bigger diversity. And we're going to see, I'm pretty sure in the next ten years, we will see a Nigerian movie at least shortlisted, if not nominated. I'm sure that that will happen. Whether that's a female Nigerian filmmaker, I don't know, but I hope so. Katia, are the stories becoming more diverse in your view? Yes, they're becoming more diverse, but it's like Karen said, the issue is, is that, you know, the Academy keeps trying to tweak the issue instead of addressing the issue, which at the end of the day is the Academy has been awards have been going on for over 70 years. And, you know, in the words of James Baldwin, how long are we supposed to wait, you know? I mean, 70 years is a long time. And we've we've had, you know, a black president in the United States. We have a black woman vice president and we can't get a black woman nominated for best director. We haven't had a black director win. You know what I mean? Like Spike Lee should have been the first. So there there is a bigger conversation also to be had within the guilds. The DGA is one of them. You know, the Directors Guild of America is a problem where they are very white, very male, and they don't support black women filmmakers. They don't support black filmmakers. And they decide to only rally around like one white woman. And it's like, good, we've done all we need to do. But the conversation needs to be had with the Steven Spielbergs who have a lot of weight in the guild and say, what needs to be done to have real diversity? And what are you doing? What are you, do you doing? You use your privilege to change that. Right, Mildred, I mean, you, you do have um, some experience in this. Why is that though? Why the lack of uh, inclusion for black women in the nomination of awards? Let, let's take a look at, if you notice this year, they're including the Asians. So obviously now you include the Asians, the blacks need to go to the side. And then next time when you include the blacks, now you got to remove the Asians. And that's how it's, it's not supposed to work. That's why I say this is a human thing. Each person must look into themselves. It's not just about the popularity contest. I think there's something within people of privilege that makes them not want to see what others have done. There should be an inclusion of everybody. You shouldn't want to make sure you maintain a status quo. And I think you can't achieve these things if you don't have an, a, a looking one. All these old, old white men should be looking at themselves and saying, why are we voting? Why are we not voting quality? Because you can't tell me that Viola Davis is not popular. You cannot tell me that Viola Davis didn't do a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. So when that time comes and you need to vote, what is it about you that's making you prefer to vote somebody who didn't do as well as them just because they are Caucasian? That's, to me, that's the point.
I think every other thing is just theoretical stuff that we talk about. The practicality of things is what I always like to look about and look at. Right. What would make me not vote the best person as opposed to voting them because they are uh, uh, my own uh, uh, color? So, Karen, let's look at this, um, you know, what Mildred refers to as this, uh, the, the predominance of the old white men, so to speak. Because one insider report showing a breakdown of the Oscar diversity problem over the past decade shows that in the top categories, at least 89% of nominations went to white people. So what exactly is the criteria? Do you know the criteria used in assessing films, directors, and actors, actresses for nomination for the various challenges? Well, for, for individual films, sure. I mean, they need a qualifying run. They need to be so long. They need to be in the right language. They need to be, uh, production must be in accordance with certain ethical qualities. They have to be screened at a certain time and you also have to pay the entry fees to the Academy. So there's all sorts of little hoops that you, can, you have to jump through and lots of things you have to do. You have to be on the ground in Los mm -hmm. Angeles County. So if you're not in, in LA, you know, is that what we are talking about, the campaigning process? Then you need somebody in L.A. Yeah, I mean, so it looks that way. If you have your film already made, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of these things. And I think Katya made a good point about the guilds, directors, guilds, and others. Um, I work in the film industry in the U.K., and we are now starting to get more diversity and more people of color. And I worked with uh, Gina Prince-Blythewood Prince on The Old Guard, and she was amazing. And I was so glad to see a black woman. I know it's a black American woman, but it was so great to see her being masterful, you know, in the office and, and not, you know, she's very experienced. That's the kind of thing that we want to see more of. But until we, we can't, it's one of these things where what's been happening in the industry, at least here, I don't know about America because I don't work there, mm -hmm. um, is we need to have young people of color trained and to enter the industry and, and be quality individuals because the opportunities, I believe, are there. I do, but it's, it's a grassroot infrastructure kind of thing. And as Katya was saying about the guilds, that, that they need to start looking as well. But uh, as I said, it's, it's also the money thing. And it's also, you know, I'm not really happy that Michelle Williams is, has, a, has a nomination or Anna de Amas when I would have preferred to see the quality performances of Danielle Deadweiler and Viola Davis. But it didn't happen this year. Katia, you raised an interesting point there on the um, hashtag Oscar So Why, because in 2016, um, that hashtag sought to raise concern in the diversity challenge. I want to find out from you, though, how much has really changed since the Academy's 2016 uh, racial reckoning? Nothing. Everybody put up a nice little hashtag in their last little, uh, the nice little black box and did performative art and then went right back to in 2021 they're doing the same old same old i do want to point out one thing i just got done covering sundance and in sundance i saw 10 films by black women directors the problem isn't that the talent is there the problem isn't that the projects are in there is exactly as mildred said it is the idea of you know and, and i just wrote about this you know where i said what okay so these women get phrases they win awards at these festivals you know the film gets distributed like the woman king made money so it's not a making money issue uh you know danielle was everywhere in los angeles her and chua were doing all the q a's all the fyc um conversations i'm a critics choice member i vote for critics choice awards but again, we're only 12% of the population. If every black member voted in the academy, that's not enough. We need our white colleagues. And I also want to point back to what Mildred said is we can be celebrate Michelle and Asians getting their much overdue support and finally being celebrated and still call out the, the academy for their lack of inclusion. The two truths can coexist at the same time. It's not an either or. Absolutely, Michelle deserves. But again, this is a woman, took 40 years for this to happen for her. At the end of the day, I think also as journalists, we gotta put on our courage hat and we gotta start asking some of these white actresses who run around and talk about womanhood, but don't show up for black women, don't show up for women of color. Right. They never have these dinners for people of color. 
So I do think it's it's a lot of people that have to come to the front of the congregation and start answering these tough questions. All right, we're going to take a short break now. And when we come back, we look at some of the ways these issues of race at the Oscars can be addressed. To stay with us. Welcome back to Talk Africa. Still with me are Mildred Okwo, Katia Woods, and Karen Krizanovic. Before the break, we looked at the history of racial problems at the Academy Awards. Let's now look at some ways these issues may be addressed. And Mildred, you know, this year in the Best International Feature Film category, there are nominations for German, Argentinian, Belgian, Polish, and Irish films. Where are the African films? Well, we're still learning how to make the kinds of films uh, that uh, the Oscars want. One thing about the Nigerian film industry, they really don't care much about. <laughs> They're trying to tell stories to their people first. And sometimes those stories may not Action. be appealing to what the Oscars might want. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But I love the fact, look, that they're still first trying to learn filmmaking, number one, and they're trying to talk to their people. They're trying to talk to their people in the language that they understand. Then maybe as the years go by, they will learn, we will obviously learn uh, the languages of making international films and making the kinds of films that Oscars uh, uh, want. And you know that it's not always, Oscar films are not always very lucrative. So you could make a film that the Oscars will rave about and Africans will not like it. You understand? And we, we right. here, we don't, our budgets are quite low. So the people making films here, we're, we're first trying to sell these films and make sure that our people buy them before right. we go that next, you know. And I, I think that's why you're not seeing so many African films. But we will get there. We're still, it's baby steps at a time. And it's going to require a lot of money and a lot, a lot of support from uh, African countries, you know, the, their governments. Right. So, Katia, I want to get your view on that because in nearly 75 years of, um, you know, Oscar for the best international film, only three, only three have gone to um, African films. So what, in your view, do you think are the barriers for African films gaining the Academy's recognition? Well, I'm going to say that the quality is there, number one. Um, the films have been there. There are tons of films that, that I've loved. But again, I think it's a money thing. Also, you know, um, you have to facilitate, again, for the filmmaker to, you know, to partner with a studio that can afford to bring the filmmaker, at least a director and a producer and maybe a talent to come to Los Angeles come to New York and do the campaigning. People like to meet the talent. People like to talk to the talent. They like to do the whole, you know, getting to know a little bit what was the inspiration behind. We have to also remember that, you know, the African film, you know, community doesn't have the money in the infrastructure that a Germany, that another European nation as Spain has. You know, the government in many of these cases facilitates and invests in the arts and then you need the combination of entering the right festival you have to time it right you kind of have to go fall summer can venice new york film festival afi here in los angeles but again and it's also i think a a um an ignorance thing right we have to stop thinking of africa as one place mm -hmm. africa is the continent we don't think of europe as one place we treat each country individual and each culture individual. And we have, we're have we getting films from parts that we're not used to or that we're not familiar with. And so we have to open up our minds and be more uh, you know, perceptive from hearing those voices. But I do think also you need to pour in more money 
and 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 support so that those films can get in front of as many eyes as they need to. According to an interview with actress uh, Halle Berry in Variety after she won her award, she stated that her historic Oscar win did not seem to help her career in the way that uh, she expected. So does winning an Academy Award bring better prospects, though, for those that work in the industry? Well, um, the Oscar is often a poison chalice. It, it, it can also kill your career. It, it has done that with, with, with white actors as well. I mean, if, if Halle says it isn't helping her. Um, it's, it's not... A, wealth card and it's not a success card uh it's it's a nod for a performance or for a career so whereas whereas it's it's a wonderful accolade and probably one of the highest in hollywood if not the for filmmakers um it it doesn't do away with the variety and the vagaries of the industry which is very very it's a tricky industry and it's hard to to keep working in it and it's hard to be successful in it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think Hallie's a terrific performer. Uh, I don't know why she hasn't had more roles. I, I don't know if it's particular. I mean, of course, I mean, I'm looking at it from from a critic, and I, you know, and I know there's no such thing as colorblind. I know that we like to pretend white people like to pretend that you know we well we we don't see color. Well. I see that it could be, we could say we don't want a Halle Berry type. We don't want someone like that. But uh, we're seeing more and more in, more inclusion. I would like to see more, but not at the cost of quality. And that is not to say logically that black women are not quality performers or filmmakers. That is not the equation I want to embrace. Mildred, this is a very um, interesting debate here because you're a founding member of the Nigerian Oscar Selection Committee. Now, that whole debate about campaigning uh, for an Oscar, you know, student, studios are said to spend up to $10 million to lobby for Oscar voters. How much of an influence does this have on who or which films get nominated? Huge, huge. It's huge. You can win um, the Oscar what not for for your country but then when it comes to campaigning you better have uh, the amount of money that's needed to really get in front of this oscar uh, the oscar people that uh, vote and, and it's quite a lot of money that most countries uh, might not be in africa might not be able to afford right uh, so that's I mean, I, I come from both sides of the divide I'm, I'm also american and i'm african and I see it, I see this happen over and over again. So you look at Engina Blythewood, she's been a master at it for over 20 years. She did log and basketball, for goodness sake. If it was a Caucasian director, she would have loads of work. 20 years later, now they're talking about her, but I've known her for so long, to be so good for so long, but nobody was giving her a chance. And now, we're talking about her as if, you know, she's just started. We, we were just talking about Sun, Sundance. There's 10 films there. Mm -hmm. I don't have to beg you to see those films. You should see them just like you see the white people, the films that are made by the white folks. Mm -hmm. These young white kids don't have to fight as hard as the black people do. So what's what gives? That's what I ask. So I'm not even asking at all those big points of the directors of the guilds and all this stuff. I just want the basic humanity of it all. All right. So I want to get your uh, final comment here. What do you think needs to change going forward for the Oscars to be more inclusive? First off, to you, Mildred. So I like that Chinoye talked about this. We just have to keep talking because what happens is, um, obviously, after the uh, Oscars so white, a few things happened and then now there's this lax because they feel like we've done it and you know it's going well so you should just shut up i think what we should do is to keep talking and raising and making noise and forcing people to look inward and and i and I, when i say people i mean the voters in oscars the oscar uh, administrators themselves they must continuously look at what they need to do to make inclusion possible 
right now it's only the privileged that are able to make the kinds of films you know that get uh, that get noticed they must begin to do other things outside of what they're doing now to attract younger filmmakers uh, that are of black indian asian whatever they said to make films and for them to be attractive you want to look at 20 years from now when there's a nomination you just have people who are nominated and they're from different that it's all inclusive and people can look at it and say yes these are the best that we have they must they must invest in doing the things that will make that possible it shouldn't just be about money but they seem to think it's just about money and it's not changing we have to do something to change this because if we keep making it only about money we are never 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 going to answer this race issue so Kara, what do you think needs to change going forward for the Oscars to be more con more inclusive? I think being being aware of what Mildred and Kathy were talking about. Um, as I said, I'm I'm shocked. I mean, granted, there are only okay. I'm shocked at the exclusion of the black actors substituted for Caucasian actors. Okay, I'm shocked, but uh, uh, there are only so many nominations every year. And it would be great if like Best Picture, we could include 10 people or seven people or whatever. Um, but the Academy does its own decisions. It makes its own rules. And these are not generally run along race lines. Um, they're run along money lines and nepotism lines and who do we know and who do we owe? It's very, very political, as well as having a bit of meritocracy. Uh, for example, there are lots of films and lots of performances that win the Oscar that 10 years later, you look back and you think that wasn't the best one of that year. Right, Katya, your thoughts? Well, it, for me, I believe it starts from the critics groups who start champion certain groups. There needs to be more diversity there all the way up to the different guilds, right? And that means that you need to start having hard conversation with some of the power players and say, hey, you've made an X amount of films. You've never had any talent of color in front or behind the camera. Hey, you know, when white women actresses are talking about champion women causes saying, hey, but I noticed you never talk about pay disparity when it comes to women of color. Why is that? We have to start having these uncomfortable conversations and until we do things are never going to change because again it's a matter of bias and also lack of awareness you know so i think it's it's that and also we have to stop being happy with like hey we have a first time okay great but why did it take 70 years for us to have this first nomination a very interesting discussion there. Thank you all for your thoughts indeed. Well, that's all for this edition of Talk Africa. A big thank you to all our guests, Mildred Okwo, film director and producer, Katia Woods, a freelance film and TV critic and entertainment journalist, and Karen Krizanovic, a researcher for feature films and secretary of the UK Critics Circle Film Section. Remember, you can be a part of this conversation online through our social media handles on Facebook and Twitter. You can also catch the show on our YouTube playlist. Do keep this conversation going and join us again next week for more Talk Africa. For me, Beatrice Marshall and the team here in Nairobi. Until next time, it's bye-bye.